Aisha Johansson is the first Sierra Leonean, man or woman, to sit on the FIFA Council, the committee that runs global football. But her rise has a wider significance for a sport trying to tackle racism and promote equality for women. I represent changing our narrative. Our story is different. Our time is now. I think that all African women, you know, our women folk, but particularly women in Africa, should run with this baton, should run with this legacy, should run with this achievement and make use of it, especially women in the sport, in, in football. A key moment in Johansson's astonishing journey came 20 years ago, as her home country was trying to emerge from a brutal civil war that left tens of thousands of people dead and many more homeless, especially children. So she founded a football club with a difference. FC Johansson let kids play the sport they loved as long as they attended school. Its charitable aims attracted global attention. David Beckham visited as a UNICEF ambassador and its teams enjoyed success on the pitch too. These were displaced kids as a result of the war and all I wanted to do was to get these boys off the streets and put them in school where they should be. At that time also on your CNN and everywhere else the narrative about Syria was child soldiers, it was you know really gruesome details about what happened during the war. And, and so I thought that, look, you know, through football, through the language of football and the power of football, I could possibly change that narrative. In 2013, Johansson went from running one club to running the sport for the entire country. A few people asked me to go. I, I said no, and they urged me uh, to go for it. And I said, OK, I'll go for, for it only because I want to ruffle the feathers of these men. Uh, because I look at what they said they aspired or they'd done and I looked at what I had done, and I thought, well, if you can match, not beat, but if you can match what I've done in football, then of course you're good to go, go for it. If her election was surprisingly smooth, the eight years that followed were anything but. She faced the severe impact on football of two major virus outbreaks, Ebola and COVID-19, had disagreements with top clubs that led to the suspension of Sierra Leone's Premier League for several years detained by the government's anti-corruption unit before clearing her name in court, the country was even banned from international football as FIFA stepped in to stop what it viewed as unwarranted government interference. There were times when I was probably the most vilified woman in my country. Why has there been so much resistance within Sierra Leone to your football presidency? It's taken me a long time to accept that being a woman um, made it worse because I had absolutely no business being in football governance. In a country, in a male-dominated industry like football, I don't think we were ready for that. Of all the tough moments, what was the hardest? I think maybe one of my scariest moments were when my father was uh, taken to hospital twice. He's 87 and um, he's, uh, his health isn't that great. And um, uh, one of the moments was when he heard that I was going to be imprisoned. And the minute he heard that, he, um, you know, he literally fell into a coma. And I could have lost my father. And I would have never forgiven myself if that had happened because he wanted for me to quit. But quitting isn't in Aisha Johansson's DNA. Growing up with my brothers, always having to fend for myself because, you know, that business of, you know, you're a girl, you're not going to play football with the boys. You're not going to be where we are. You're not going to go out night clubbing with us. You're not, you're not, you can't. And I was always, I can, I can, and I will. A lot has happened since Aisha Johansson first thought of using football to help children in Sierra Leone. But this inspirational pioneer says there is still much more to be done for her country, for Africa, and for women in the game. Alex Thomas, CNN.